Hey there, Shuby Doodlers. How are you doing? And welcome to another Dogs of Influence. And uh, what's it all? I've got somebody mowing their lawn outside. They think it's spring. Did you hear that? They got one of those sit on things. Um, <laughs> they're making quite a noise. So uh, I don't think my grass isn't quite long enough to cut yet, I suppose. No, it's mostly moss. Um, how are you doing? It is Monday, the 8th of March, and uh, we are on to number seven, dog number seven, in my Dogs of Influence, I keep trying to think what the word is, series, series is the word, I think, um, and um, I am making these um, how to draw uh, dog books, that noise is very, very loud, <laughs> I'm making these dogs, <laughs> I'm making these how to draw videos of different dogs, because... I thought I had everything ready um, on the 25th of this month. My new book, Walker and the Mystery of the Missing Millions, is coming out. This is a follow up to the previous book, which is Walker, <laughs> the boy who can talk to dogs. It's all about dogs. Uh, it's all about Walker, who's that little character. You can just about see him up there. Uh, Walker is a, a, a lad who can talk to dogs. And in the next book, which I have started plotting, Though I haven't been commissioned yet. Um, in the next book, um, I am imagining a whole bunch of dogs coming together in a kind of a dog show, um, which is going to be called Dogs of Influence. And these dogs will all be... <laughs> that's a very loud motor mower. Uh, all these uh, Dogs of Influence are kind of Instagram dogs, and they're all kind of famous on Instagram, or social media, should I say, not necessarily Instagram. So they're famous social media dogs and um, they all sort of have reasons to be famous. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm uh, drawing today. And I can see people joining us here. Hello, everybody. Um, and uh, if you've got questions and things like that along the way, put them in the uh, comments in the chat. And at the end, I will come and answer all your questions. So do, do feel free to put things in the chat along the way. Uh, but I'm just gonna get on and do the drawing and today um actually let me i can should be able to do this we could say let's not talk about it <laughs> <Didn't work. laughs> let's not talk about it yeah <laughs> let's do it <laughs> so let's come over to the overhead camera here we are and so today we are going to be doing talking all about padme uh, who is a peaking ease and I can move that across there so we can read what's going on. Uh, you think you have everything prepared, but uh, I forgot about that. So Padme um, has been sent to me by Gabriel. This is not Gabriel's dog. Uh, Padme lives with Gabriel's best friend of 30 years, Gary. Um, and in Gabriel's imagination, Padme is a dowager who runs his friend's household. She has a disdainful gaze. <laughs> she demands to ride atop Gary's shoulders in his vehicle. I imagine her as Dame Maggie Smith in Downton Abbey, um, says Gabriel. That's why I think she'd be named Dowager Lofty. <laughs> uh, at a get together of dogs of influence, Padme would be the snooty hyacinth bouquet. It, I know it says bucket. If you've never seen the program, it's a British program. Um, oh, quite some time ago very snooty lady called Hyacinth Bucket, but she said, it's pronounced bouquet, you know. Um, she's the Hyacinth Bouquet of the bunch, <laughs> running the show, looking down on others while others avoid her. And I think in any kind of um, show of influencers, I think there would always be one, but I'm sure, I'm sure, deep down inside, Padme has a heart of gold. And note of interest, her siblings went to American actor David Arquette and one of the greatest UK exports, Sir Patrick Stewart, all because of her Instagram. That's incredible. So, um, so she's got famous siblings and things around the place. Um, uh, so <laughs> let's, uh, we want to go to that, the overhead again. So I've been doing a bit of sketching. Peaking easies are not the easiest to draw. Um, so I've been sort of trying sideways, trying to get this kind of nose up in the air kind of look. And um, uh, disdainful, disdainful's not easy. Kind of big cheesy smile is quite easy. Um, well, my my sister had a peaking ease um, when I was 
or she got it when I was probably about 16, I think. And he was a real character. His name was Pom Pom of Glebe. <laughs> pom Pom, because his tail would come around the top like that, like a little Pom Pom. Well, a big Pom Pom, actually. And, uh, and we lived in a place called Glebe Road, so he was known as Pom Pom of Glebe. And that was his official um, kennel club name, I think. And uh, he was an interesting character. And so <laughs> he lived with us for quite a long time when my sister wasn't around uh, and working. And uh, so my father would, um, my father treated him, you know, he, he was so, oh, like, he just spoiled him completely, totally, utterly spoiled him. And would have him up on uh, the workbench in the in the in the shed, and brushing him and perfume and little chop drops and all sorts of stuff, you know. And uh, Pom Pom would quite often come with me. Um, I used to like taking Pom Pom for a walk. Uh, he didn't really like walks. Uh, he he would just drag, uh, especially in the autumn when there were piles of leaves. He would just. Pfft, lie on his back and you'd have to drag him through the leaves and he particularly enjoyed that <laughs> and um and the other sort of great memory i have of him is uh is now i've I known mrs rayner since <laughs> since i was 14 <laughs> and so i used to go around to her house a lot we in fact our gang kind of lived around at mrs rayner's house uh, uh yeah when she was not mrs rayner when she was young um and um, and quite often Pom Pom would come with me and I had my dad's bike, which is one of those tiny little wheel ones. And he had a, a wicker basket on the front, which was very embarrassing for a 14 year old, of course. Um, but Pom Pom could sit in the basket <laughs> with his paws on the front and um, and his ears streaming out behind him. And uh, so I would sort of take him round to see Mrs. Ray. Well, she wasn't Mrs. Ray, but I'd take him round to see the gang. And uh, and we'd all go for a walk in the park and stuff like that. And he, he would come with us. And so I know about peeking knees. Well, I know about some peeking knees. <laughs> they all have different kind of temperaments. Um, and and uh, Pom Pom was really quite cheerful, unless you came too close to him while he was eating. Um, so he, he had a way of sticking his tongue out and smiling. He would sort of, you know, do his tongue uh, uh, something like that and smile um, a bit like that. But he had this particular noise. So if anybody here is a Peking East person listening and you know about it, he had this particular noise when you got a bit too close to him while he was eating and he would go... Um, I don't know if that's just his noise or if it's a particular Peking East noise. <laughs> so we're trying to get something a little more disdainful. This is just watching the TV. Um... I'm trying to get some sort of disdain, and I think finally I got it here. Um, you see, the photographs that I had from Gabriel there, I th it mentions, in fact, that um, she is from um, a an, an Instagram um, <laughs> thing called Peak Pack. Oh, where are we now? We want the Peak Pack. That's we want. Let, I'm trying to find Peak Pack. Let me get back to here. Um, so Padme is from this, um, what's happened there? So we want to go to, I'm just trying to find Peak Pack again. There we are. So here we are. This is Peak Pack. Peak Pack 870. And uh, so there's a pack of peaks. And there was one particular um, that I found. Was that it? No, that's not. <laughs> there's lots of peaky, lots of peaky pictures here. Uh, there's Padme, look. And um, th uh, there was another one I, I found which was particularly useful. Uh, that'll be bad me again. Uh, looking slightly worried there, I think. So you can go on Instagram and find find Pete Pack eight seventy. Follow them. Give them lots of love. Um, uh, uh, and it just gave me a sort of a better kind of view. So this is kind of what I'm going to be working on. So first of all, I'm going to get myself a little piece of paper or a biggish piece of paper it's about a four I think. and if i just tape it down then it'll stay in one place and then you won't be going quick can you zoom in can you zoom out we can't see what's happening and i will zoom in a bit um, and i'll put my glasses on and 
so what I am really after um, is, is a tilt in the head for a start. So uh, pencil sharpener, pencil sharpener is hiding behind here. So I'll just sharpen my pencil. And someone was asking about these pencils the other day and it's, it's a Blackwing, Palomino Blackwing. I'm not sure which series it is. I got a box a few years ago and I'm just sort of using them. And I really like them, they're really soft, but they're really hard to erase if you make mistakes. So, but it's okay for doing things like this. So, so I'm thinking we want this kind of more, if we just think boxy like that and an angle to get that kind of disdain. <laughs> And, and we want the nose to be pretty much in the middle. And then there's an arc going out each side. And then from that kind of middle, there's another, another arc going out there, line down the middle. And, and I think the longer you make that, the more disdainful it's going to be. <laughs> and so we want that to be curved and then going down like that. And they're pretty much heading off into joining that curve there. The eyes um, are right on the level with the, the nose. So I'm going to have this kind of disdainful kind of... They're, they're basically, I think they're pugs with a lot of fur on. Um, and there is this kind of very definite eyebrow, which is just a different kind of colour of fur. And we're going to want that there. Um, and that's the top of the head. And then you're always going to get these kind of feathers coming out like that. And and this is what I think of is that little curve that I think really kind of makes a um, a Pekingese. And and that's another difficulty. Are they Pekingese or are they Pekingese? I think you can say either. Um, I think you. I'm sure some people are very particular about what they should be um, and then they're kind of lion dogs so we want a, a mane well they're not lion dogs because that's another whole thing again but, uh, <laughs> but if you think of um, having a, a, a mane kind of like that and then we're going to want to have the sort of chin and fur down there so uh, Padme has this sort of very white throat and in there somehow we're going to want to have a um, I'm not going to put her um, harness on I don't think so we want a body that's going to sort of <laughs> if any of you remember the the magic roundabout um, and that was Dougal the dog there who you never saw any feet at all and Dougal just sort of shuffles was slid along the floor really like that um, and and Pekingese, I think, should have well, our pom pom certainly had one. I think they're really meant to have this great big sort of curling over tail like that. So I'm going to put that there, and then we're going to want to see this whole thing about that's kind of roughly where the shoulder blade will be, something like that. And then you've got the elbow will be coming down there, and probably got the <laughs> the the wrist about there, and then the foot the carpals and stuff and, and similarly here you're going to have uh, the knee about there and the ankle about there and then the tarsals around about there and digits at the bottom so we'll have something like that um, which means basically we're just going to oh that needs to be fluffy <laughs> uh, coming down and then we can have these um, paws uh, that wants to be more like that and um, they'll be going that way and similarly we'll have uh, one two three because the other one is sort of around the other side they, they've got four digits uh, and then that will be there and there and there oh, I think that's pretty good and so uh, what I've been doing throughout this whole process is, is, is sort of doing this sketch and then getting my layout pad. This is actually this is quite a bit bigger, this drawing. Um, I've been getting this layout pad. And again, I'll get some tape <laughs> so that 
uh, it stays in the same place because <laughs> otherwise I drag it off the screen and you'll scream and say, I can't see. Um, and, and this is just about kind of perfecting it really and getting this bit right. Um, <laughs> they're going to be about, about like that. And we can, and I keep saying every day, you know, and if, you, <laughs> if you're worried that this is cheating because I'm tracing, do not worry, do not fret and feel very um, free to do this kind of thing yourself because it's not cheating. It's just uh, rearranging, it's just designing, and it's only cheating if you copy someone else's drawing and claim it as your own. That's cheating. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> that's not what I'm doing here. So I'm gonna, I want this to be a little bit more snooty altogether. There we are, that's getting a bit more snooty. And, and it, it's those kind of little things that you'd use this kind of process for when you've, you've almost got it there and you think, well, I need it just a little bit more like this and a little bit more like that. Um, and, and just sort of balancing up and kind of working out how it's going to go. And that's going to get something like that. And then we want that sort of coming in this great pom-pom on the top. Huh. And um, unfortunately, Pom Pom came to a sticky end in the in the pond in a very cold winter's day. Shouldn't have gone in, but um, there we go. We all loved him, and he loved his chalk drops. <laughs> We had a little thing in the mornings where my father would sort of come and give us all a cup of tea in bed and then he'd give us all a chop drop and make us break it up into four and then he would, or whoever didn't have the pom-pom would go <whistles> and he'd come zooming into your room and you give him a chop drop and he <laughs> and then somebody else would go <whistles> and zoom off he would go to the next room. <laughs> And uh, so that was a kind of a morning routine. There we go. <laughs> so what are we going to do now? Now we are going to get the light pad. And again, I'll stick that down there and press the button, press the button, press the button. I don't think it's switched on at the wall. <laughs> and press the button yeah there we go good uh, which sort of bleaches it all out but it's okay because i'm going to get some watercolor paper and get the right side so this um this is layout paper and it's uh, sea white to brighton 50 grams of square square inch I've, I've put a link to this in today i've, I've um, added a link to that uh, which you can't seem to get in the states so i found some other lot which looks about the same called strathmore um, there's a link for that on Amazon, as there is for this light pad and everything I'm using today. <laughs> if you purchase anything through those links, I will get an affiliate fee, but you will not be charged any extra. And you'll be helping me keep running this channel. Right, I'm going to pin that down and pin that down. Um, what I really need is a, is, a, is a foot pedal so I can do, sort of calm the lights down above so, so that I can see what's going on because it's, it's, it's not easy. Um, and I'm just going to make this slightly furry on the top there, like that. And in fact, I'm going to just do... I don't think I've got a link to this pencil there. Huh. And they're going, ooh, what have you got there? Ooh, it's a Rotring 800. Ooh, that's nice. Um, <laughs> and we need those little furry bits on the top. So I'm drawing those in pencil so I can erase them, but they're going to be kind of eyebrows like that. And this is going to come around a little toffee nose like that. Down there. Ooh. And it's gonna be and like, um, there's 
Yeah, this is not a portrait. OK, this is uh, creating a character for a book. And as such, while I'm doing it, I'm, I'm thinking about the character and I can't help but start thinking. I'm giving her love, luscious eyelashes. I can't help but think, oh, how does she talk like, my dear? Uh, she must sound like a dear lady dowager. And, um... <sighs> Yeah, so if I was here on my... Well, I am here on my own, but I'm not really, am I? Because you're out there <laughs> watching and sort of... In a way, you're in here with me too. Um, but certainly if I was on my own, I know that I'd be... i be talking in funny voices. Because <laughs> that's sort of part of the process of um, creating characters, really. And... Uh, and might be kind of why I do what I do, because I um, I know we were talking about accents and voices and things yesterday. And I've always been able to kind of mimic accents. Hang on, I'm just going to add an extra little bit up here. Uh, sort of coming up like that. Um, I've always been pretty good at m mimicking accents. Not, not languages terribly well. Um, although I do tend to be the one in the family who gets <laughs> told, right, we're going on holiday to <laughs> France or something. It's your job to do the talking. So I have to go and do my brushing up. And I'm the one that ends up doing all the talking wherever we go. Um, but I'm not a great linguist, but I'm, I'm quite a good mimic. So... So my accents are usually quite good when I'm, when I'm in a foreign country, <laughs> even if I only have sort of four or five words. And, and, and so I think, you know, maybe the accents and the mimicry sort of comes from a kind of, it's an acting kind of thing, isn't it? I suppose it's acting out, play acting. Um, and it's about sort of creating characters. Uh, uh, so, and I know other illustrators <laughs> do very similar things, uh, sort of do funny voices and sort of bring their characters to life while they're while they're drawing them. Um, uh, to the, uh, no, that will sort of come like that. Um, oh, I think that's going a bit awry that one, but. There. You might want a bit more going on there. Right. So this uh, paper here is, I'll switch that off. This paper is C white paper again. And I've put a link to um, an Amazon pad down below. And um, and again, you can't get it in, Aust in Australia. Well, I, maybe, I don't know. Uh, America, anyway, you can't get it. So I put a link there to Canson watercolour paper. This is 350 grams, which is really heavy. Um, and the Canson, I think, was 300. So if anybody tries it, let me know. Um, and so I am looking for my <laughs> paintbrushes, which I have a horrible feeling. <laughs> no, here we are. They're right in front of me. I thought, oh, no, I had thought of taking them in to the house to fill them up and I thought oh have I taken them there and not brought them back um now this is again this is in the this is a Cotman um watercolor uh, sketches starter set and I'm going to get myself some kitchen towel because I always have a piece of kitchen towel um and this is uh, down below if you, you know if you really want to get started watercoloring this is a, a great set to start off with a good good quality um and um, and just a nice easy set to get started. This is a an, a Pentel Aquash <laughs> water brush, <laughs> and the water is in the handle and it flows down through the brush, so it works slightly differently to a normal brush. And now this is where I have to start thinking. So I'm getting a bit of ochre, yellow ochre, and I'm going to add a little bit of. Um, scarlet in there I think cause, and maybe a bit of yellow um, and I know that I really want those to be quite 
um, golden-ish there and I'm just trying to think whether actually I think I'll just kind of paint the rest and get that more get that back to ochre rather than yeah there we are I just wanted that bit to be more golden there more orangey and I'm gonna just it's kind of like a like an undercoat and uh, we want some in there as well I'm pretty sure and I'll just and I'll stop here because we've got this white throat and I might do a little bit of just sort of gentle something there although that is really quite dark in there and uh, we want this sort of ochre across the back like that although it gets darker the further down you go and this is where it's quite hard to work out what's going on um, on the tail so I'm really making this up because I think there's um, I think there's quite a lot of white involved in the tail <laughs> but also quite a bit of black it's not really black it's very dark it is black yeah um, and then we want the toes down here um, and I'm going to put a little bit of a little bit of pink in the toes here just to make them a little bit more delicate and more make it more of a character than a than a a, a portrait really I need to be a little bit darker underneath there as well uh, it's going well I think I think and um I think we can start mixing up. So this here is burnt umber, which is a very dark brown. And I want it to be a little more dark. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of French ultramarine blue just to make that darker again. And so this is where I want to be fairly careful with these um, eyebrow section bits here because they're, they're kind of really important to get that kind of the look of disdain uh, that we're after <laughs> I think they're the um, and, and they're character identifiers as well so I'm going to put a little bit of um, sort of strokes in down there for sort of hint of fur because there is a kind of a hint of darkness on the inside the part of the I want to call them feathers ears uh, along there and and then we got this kind of bits sort of coming down there and around like that <laughs> and we want to have that middle bit there is staying Brown, I think we sort of, sort of like that. I think that's sort of something like that. Well, of course, as I say, it's not a portrait, so I can I can make it up as I go along if I want to. And <laughs> so I'm getting some blue, blue, and uh, and we'll get some uh, dark brown in there as well. Burnt umber, I'm pretty sure it is. And when you mix the two together, you get a kind of a dark grey. And this is where we're going to want these, these sort of dark, dark greys coming in now. So Padme is a sort of a mix of mix of tones. So having put this in, I'm going to have to um, put some in up here as well. So this is going to be quite sort of dark around there. And then we want to get that sort of bottom lip, that sort of disdainful bottom lip look, sort of there like that. Um, and let's have another look at Padme, yes. So it's tricky, very tricky to get this. <laughs> um, and I think we're going to want to have this to be quite dark there. And just to sort of bring it out 
that, and we need to make that a bit darker here so that the eyebrows kind of show up that bit more. But then I think we're going to need to have slightly darker on the eyelids, on the top lids like that. And maybe a little bit underneath. This is not easy to do. Um, especially since I haven't got the model in front of me. I'm not entirely sure if I'm getting this right. So I'm, I'm kind of making it up. Um, and we're going to want that. Um, again, along the bottom the darker part I think I think I'm probably overdoing this darker part and if I just sort of flick upwards then you get sort of the thin point at the end of the flick which is where we want that to be up at the top and, and it's just kind of trying to make Padme look very furry really um, and I think we just need a bit more sort of. Mm. <laughs> I, I think because I haven't done the nose, of course, that does make her look a little bit weird at the moment. So if I just sort of warm that up a bit in there as well. Although I think that was what. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it's. Um, so we have a little bit of sort of shade coming in down there and into this white throat. Now black, this is the difficult bit. So um, this is sort of mixing it up really thick and gl gloopy straight off the pan really. So I'm using the brown and the blue again. And I'm just going to leave a little bit of white for shininess so that you know Padme's got a nice wet cold nose and I think maybe we can add a little bit there and a little bit there clean the brush and then just sort of add a bit of modeling there like that and a bit more under there oh, I don't know, she's coming along she's coming along <laughs> I think I think we just need more kind of fur basically around here um, that would be darker under there so we can do that hitting a very strong I get these moments when I just kind of it's like I'm somewhere else it's a kind of displacement kind of thing <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, I know I know I'm not actually there and it's not a daydream but it's just a, it's a memory it's a very intense memory of place I think is what it is and I was just <laughs> I was just on a roundabout in Oman for some reason <laughs> uh, uh, um, as I was really lucky to go to Oman a few years ago went to visiting schools there um, that's been a, a a really great good great part of being a children's author over the years as I've been invited to some interesting places to come and talk in schools and build up memories of roundabouts <laughs> roundabouts I have known there is one roundabout which I quite often have this sort of flashback of going to um, which is near Ludlow. It's on the outside. Is it Ludlow? Mm, can't remember. And, mm. <laughs> and there is a roundabout on the outskirts of it, which you have to go around to wherever you go. And um, there is an American diner there, like a proper old Airstream American diner kind of thing sitting there. And, um, and a petrol station. And I was coming back back one day around there and I was listening to something on the radio I'd never heard before um, it was um, Carl Jenkins Arms and the Man and it's the oh, Benedictus I can't remember and starts off very very quietly and it builds 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 <laughs> And then suddenly, as I was just coming around the roundabout, there's this 
double shot on the kettle drums. <laughs> and it's, I think it, well, it's all about arms and soldiers and fighting and war and stuff. And so I'm assuming it's a, you know, it's the cannon going or something like that. You know, it's the start of the battle. <laughs> and, and then the, this massive, massive choir coming. <laughs> And it is just the most stupendous thing. And I thought I was going to crash. It was just... <laughs> I had to sort of... Uh, find something to pull in and get my breath back again. Because it was just such an extraordinary moment. And and I've listened to it many times since. And just never quite the same as that initial moment. I'm just filling in time here, aren't I, really? While I'm trying to get this... Mm, I think maybe. Um, uh, yeah, so quite often some I, I go to that roundabout. <laughs> I'm just sitting here drawing away and poof, I'm there. I'm not, I haven't lost um consciousness or anything like that i'm completely here and everything you know not gone funny or anything it's just uh, you know it's just, it's just a suddenly sense of place memory now i think i'm going to need to have just a little bit more blue down there for we'll have some shade under here and we'll do kind of like that then i'm going to clean the brush and just drag it with some clean water and I'm going to call that it and I'm not entirely happy with that I think I need to do a lot a lot more drawing and working out with this one but um it's it's all that fur <laughs> and and it's all the fur and it and it's because all the detail kind of disappears into darkness as well which is pretty difficult hmm let's come and see what you have to say. Oh, in fact, if I come over there, then we can do that, can't we? Let's see if we can have a look at the same time. There, cool. Um, let's come and have a look and see what you have to say about all of this. Uh, uh, Stacey Newman, you missed a shoe. I'm not seeing those links to Amazon, so you get your commission. If you could be sure to post them, please, today. Thanks. I'm sure I did. I'm sure I did. I can just go and check that, I think, somehow. Can I, can I check that? Um, <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, ba -ba -ba. Let's go and have a look at that. I do, 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 ding. And should be down. Yeah, if you go and look in the description box down below, there is a great long list of, of links to Amazon. So, um, Octavia B, hello, Suzanne Barry, hi, Judy, Big Shed, hello all, thank you for being here, Judy, Ethan, you came to my school, Ethan Sluman, fantastic, Trails DM, how are you doing, hope you're feeling okay after your shot, Tracy Newbury there, below the description, thank you, uh, oh yeah, you may need to click where it says see more, yeah, uh, is that Larina or Irina Mogea, hello, uh, you're never quite sure with it, an L, like, yeah, uh, although, it, no, capital, e arena there we are, er, e arena 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 sorry, Magaya, hello, <laughs> Chris Bidger, hi there, Karen Townsend illustrates, hi, Karen McMillan, howdy, G, Alan Gravel, holy cow, that's my best friend's dog, Fame at last, <laughs> Lisa Bella have had an adorable last episode, Lady Ginger Snap of Meadowbrook, my Jinju baby affectionately, that was way back in the 70s in Charlotte, oh, NC is New North Carolina, Stacey Newbury, yes, Big Shed found it. Yeah, yeah, good. Kota, what dog? <laughs> Wayne Medley. Uh, shop, how are you? I have missed your works. Oh, Shoe, how are you? <laughs> I have missed your works so much. It's good to finally catch you live. Excellent, good. Uh, Gabriel says, you've definitely captured Padme's attitude. Gary will expire with delight. Padme <laughs> demands to ride on Gary's shoulders. <laughs> I try to think. No, no, my ginger cat used to ride on my shoulders. There we are. Er er Irina, yes, there we are. Cool. Well, um, it looks like that's all you have to say today. Oh, no, there's more. 
There's more here. I missed something there. Octavia B. That missed the. I had that did a go. Yes, I see the white pan in your watercolor set is untouched. Wouldn't it be easier if you switched it with a neutral tint pan? It most certainly would. And in fact, it would be even easier if I switched it for a Naples yellow, because uh, that's I think the harder one to create. Naples yellow is just. I find I I don't know. I just do so much with Naples yellow, but I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to do this with a set as if you've just bought it yourself and you're just starting out and not confusing you with having to go off and get other colours, <laughs> which uh, makes it a bit a bit easier. Yeah. So the OK Diner, Ludlow Road, Lempster, Lempster, that's it. Yeah, not Ludlow. Ludlow? Yeah. Do I go through Ludlow on the way to get there? I can't remember. That's the one. Thanks, Judy. <laughs> So I have stopped there on my way a few times. Um, Lisa Bella in Houston, the space city now. Cool. And uh, I think there we are. No, you've got nothing else to say. I've also <laughs> said it all. <laughs> I'll give you, I think we've got about a 10 second delay. So I'm going to give you about 10 seconds. If there's anything you desperately want to know about, talk about things today, you got it now. So stop, put it in the chat, because <laughs> otherwise uh, we finished quite early on this one, I think. And let's just have a look. Let's just have a look, see if any chat comes in. You see, this is delay. This is the tricky bit, isn't it? I can see myself going like that on the thing. I'll tell you a sneak peek at tomorrow's dog. Well, do you know I haven't chosen the dog yet? <laughs> That's what I'm going to do right now. I haven't actually chosen a dog for, t for tomorrow. Uh, this is all very kind of, you know, ad hoc and let's do it day by day kind of thing. So I haven't sort of cho chosen the dogs yet. Although I've got a fairly good idea what it might be. Uh, and she says, it's very quiet here in the audience today, isn't it? Oh, subscribe, I should say, let's do. Yeah, you should subscribe, shouldn't you? Very quickly, while you are watching this, look for a subscribe button and click it and then click the little bell that pops up and then click the word all and then you will be notified next time I have a live stream coming up because you'd much rather be watching this live than watching it afterwards. Go on, make sure you are subscribed to the Shoe Rainer Live drawing channel. Indeed, you certainly would want to be <laughs> watching this live. <laughs> but it's OK if you miss it. It will always be here to watch any time you want to do. So, um, Karin says, Malena, I know. She could sing tango. I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> Isabella, will you be doing an old English sheepdog? Well, I don't know. Nobody has sent me an old English sheepdog to do. So it's the, the dogs that I'm doing are chosen um, from a whole series of dogs. People have been sending me pictures of their dogs and kind of descriptions about them, their character and what they what the character might be like, not actually what they actually is like, and it's sort of the fantasy characters. And um, uh, well, uh, there's quite a lot of sort of similarly shaped dogs. And, and I think that's somebody asked, would I be doing cats? And I think that would be a difficulty doing cats because with the cats, it's a lot of it is about different colors and patterns. Uh, and cats are generally cat shaped, whereas dogs have been trained and trained and trained and you know to be big and little and sort of fit down rabbit holes and all sorts of things <laughs> and sort of dogs come in very much different shapes so different shaped dogs would be really really interesting <laughs> uh so stacy newbury thank you love me this thank you suzanne barry can you still send in a photo of your dog you certainly can we have until not just the 25th we have until the 26th of March, I was about to say May. Uh, we have until the 26th of this month, so I'm going to be doing 25 of these. I had one day off, um, and uh, I'm doing these every day until the 26th. Uh, so, uh, so there's plenty of time to keep sending dogs in. Um, the, the, the trails TM Tango is my cat's name. Fantastic. Uh, is that a ginger cat? Because we have a, an orange drink here in the UK called Tango, which is bright orange. And used to be the advertising thing about I've been tangoed. <laughs> and they, 
they had they, yes they would have sort of these things people would drink their drink and then they would do an action replay where this man would come along completely dressed in orange with an orange painted face and he would slap them around the face but it was all done so fast that you didn't see it you could only see it in the action replay sad isn't it Karina I'm still painting so it's hard to come with questions okay Susan Mary does it have to be a thoroughbred dog no it doesn't <laughs> okay are you going to the beach this summer loved your beach vlog this summer am I going to the beach we are going to Scotland for a couple of weeks uh, and we're going on the Moray Firth which is not quite the sea but it's a big estuary and there are dolphins and stuff like that so yes I hope to do something there and then later we are going to go to the North Devon coast uh, yeah for a week so that'll be nice um, so I'll certainly be doing beachy stuff from there uh, Charles yep tango is white and orange slightly ginger but more sandy colour cool uh, bar L Dean Alexander hello um, <laughs> Judy says Susan Barry you can send to the dogs of infants at shootradio.com thank you Judy thank you uh, Bar uh, Alexander, hello, he's done that uh, Lisabella, we'll send you some pictures then Ex excellent of your Georgie and uh, looks like we are about coming to an end and I should say then if you really really want to do you know a bit more and sort of join in stuff like that come and join us on Patreon and you'll be really helping to keep this channel going but on this Saturday I had to cancel it last Saturday because it was feeling well this Saturday then I'll be doing a much sort of longer kind of dog illustration kind of thing with uh, with my patrons in one in the morning one in the afternoon and and it's a, a zoom tutorial so we all get together and take our time and chat and stuff like that you could be there so go and check out oh I, I could press the thing couldn't i if you enjoy these shows and you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee to keep me going head on over to patreon.com slash shoe rainer where you will find all the details of how you can support this channel in the meantime on with the show Indeed, on with the kind of ending of the show. And Karina says, Scotland is great. That's what Tony the Tiger says. Uh, <laughs> Karina is biased. She lives in Scotland, of course. And uh, uh, Hey Kay says, Scotland is fun. I need to go one day. It is. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. Um, and so there we go. I think we have kind of probably reached the end. And I am going to say thank you all very much uh, for watching. And you've given me a bit of a, that didn't work, did you? You give me a bit of a, there we are. <laughs> I have these sound effects fixed up, but if I haven't pressed something else beforehand, they don't work. Um, so um, uh, Claudine Louise Nails 2 says hi, just as I'm about to say goodbye. So uh, thank you all very much. Uh, for, for sliding by. Hey, Kay, I feel like I'm watching TV. <laughs> Lol, love it. Thank you. Octavia B says, thank you, Sue. Goodbye. And thank you all um, for watching. And I will be back here tomorrow at four o'clock. Make it a day. <laughs>